Hallelujah. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for joining me. Praise the Lord. Good to see you, sis, tonight. Thank you for joining. Appreciate it. Webster, LaShonda, Rossetti. God bless you all for joining tonight. We're going to have a great lesson uh, from the book, The Battle for the Mind. We're still studying that same subject. There's so much in that book that's enriching to us our spiritual growth and uh, we have to be willing to allow the Holy Spirit to teach us and to guide us and to counsel us to instruct us by the Word of God to change our thought life that we can be fruitful and abundant in the kingdom of God Amen. Amen. We're going to go ahead and, and get started. Um, open up in the word of prayer. Thank you, Lord. Father, this evening we come before your throne of grace. First of all, just to tell you thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for the presence of the Lord abiding in our hearts on today how you minister to us throughout the day you kept us secure from danger seen and unseen you've been a shield round about us god and a covering over our heads oh god from the storms of life that would try to encounter and rage against us yet god we still give you glory we give you praise oh god for this opportunity we are gathered tonight to learn your word. We ask today, Father, you speak to our hearts by divine revelation from the Logos and speak a rhema word, a specific spoken word from the heart of God that will reach our hearts to the core to help change, revive, to transform our thought life to be more fruitful and abundant in the kingdom of God that we think kingdom mindedness of God, that we live according to the word of God and the dictates of the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Forgive us for our sins, knowingly and unknowingly washes in the blood of the Lamb. Purify our thoughts, O oh God, tonight. Help us remove the busyness of the day that we can be focused to hear what you have to speak tonight, O oh God, to help us become more and more conducive and be conformed to your image and your likeness through your Son, Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord God, that you would keep us in perfect peace as our minds are stayed on you. And we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise, O oh God. We speak healing, Father, over those who need healing tonight, O oh God. Those who lost loved ones, that you be their comfort and their strength, O oh God, to endure the hardship, the disappointments, the grieving hour, God, that you give them joy in place of sorrow. Peace, O oh God, that transcend their minds. We can think on the good things, O oh God, that you have done for their lives. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you tonight. Again, thank you for joining. Tonight we're going to continue our discussion from the book, The Battlefield of the Mind. And we're going to talk about tonight, this is a very wonderful subject, but I'm going to read a devotion before we get into it. It's about the wandering mind. The wandering mind. And so many people, minds have wandered from the truth of God's word. And God wants us to know tonight that we have to have control of our thought life. We talked about a couple of weeks ago, the busy, how our minds become so busy and distracted and distorted with so much going on around us and in our lives. And the enemy uses it as a playground to keep you in a place of fear, doubt, unbelief, and bondage. And God wants us to know tonight that we sometimes find ourselves living in a wandering mind where our mind just wanders 
We're trying to figure out how to fix things going on wrong in our lives. We're trying to fix our problems. We kind of change, trying to change things that only God has the power to do. We, we try to rush God in delivering us in areas of our lives. We need deliverance. And, and the, the most thing that's so important I found out in this Christian walk is having the love of God and patience. The love of God and patience. And the reason why, because God loves us so much, he looked beyond our faults, our inabilities, our shortcomings, our hangups, our mess ups. And guess what he did? He showed us mercy and compassion. And then he poured out grace upon us. The grace when we couldn't even get ourselves right, fix our own selves up to come into his presence, never measure up. He did it all through his son, Jesus, that we have the right to come before God for ourselves. We don't need a man coming for us to go before God for us. We can go to God for ourselves because we're entitled to the benefits and the promises in God's word that we can speak what God says to speak, do what God said we can do, and be what God wants us to be. Amen. So I'm going to read the devotion for the day from the book, More of You, God. More of you, God, whenever this computer decides to act right. Hallelujah. God is so good. We're going to read this in just a second. Give me a minute to get to it. I just lost it. This computer is doing something goofy. But today it says, My life is a lesson in humility. I can only grow with you, Lord. Today, Father, I know I'm nothing without you, Lord Jesus. Every gift I have comes from you and only you, Lord. I do not deserve any of these blessings you have bestowed upon me. You are so gracious and, and you honor me with so much. I am very thankful unto you, my King. God, you gave your son's life for me. Therefore, I will give up some of my prized possessions to my neighbors so it will benefit them and glorify you. Lord, I know as I humble myself, you give what you have promised. It doesn't get any better than this to receive your blessings as I'm always trying to be obedient to you, my Savior, my King. I want to be more like you, Jesus, and I can, have, I can only have this humble spirit with more of you, God. Amen. Amen. So God wants us to be in a place of humility in our hearts and our, and our mindsets where every precious promise and blessing he has for us can begin to be revealed to us by our humility and obedience. So many times we make mistakes, we mess up, we fall short of God's glory, but nevertheless, every blessing, even just getting up in the morning is a blessing. Having a breath of life is a blessing. Why? Because you could have been dead. And, but yet God saw fit to wake us up another day, gave us another chance, another opportunity to do better than what we did on yesterday. And that's the, the love that God has for us, that he looked beyond our faults and he saw our need. He gave his son to be our example that we can overcome any obstacle in our lives as long as we have more of God in us. Amen. So it's very important that we walk in humility. It's very important that we humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God, that God will have his way in our lives. Amen. We're going to get into our lesson in just a second. Computer acting goofy tonight for some strange reason, but it's okay because God is still in control. Give me one second here. But I pray everyone is having a, a beautiful day, that you're standing firm in the faith, and no matter what's going on in your life, that God is strengthening, God is encouraging you. He's leading, bringing you through the day victoriously because so many times the enemy wants to inflict us with fear, doubt, and unbelief. And he wants to keep us in a defeated mindset. And a couple of weeks ago, we talked about how the mind can be so busy. We can have so much going on in our mind 
till we drive ourselves crazy because we're trying to trying to fix this, trying to do that, don't have enough time in the day to accomplish all the things I want to do. So we just get so bombarded in our minds and people end up getting to depression, we have mental illness because they allow their minds to be filtrated with so much unnecessary things that distracts you from hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit is trying to speak to us, we don't hear his voice because we're distracted and our hearing has been clouded with all the busyness of the day to where we put God on the back burner and we put ourselves in the forefront, all our list of agenda and things we need to do and accomplish, we put that before God. So therefore you have mixed priorities. But God wants us to know tonight that he's gonna help realign our priorities where everything come back into the place where we hear God's word and begin to speak God's word and stand on God's word, no matter what comes our way, to keep standing and having done all the stand, stand victoriously in Christ Jesus. So if you follow me along in the book, in the Kindle version, I'm on page 77. In the Kindle version, page 77, I'm not sure what the regular book is. I don't have the regular book. I just have the Kindle version. But... I'm on page 77, chapter 9. And it says, A wandering. And that's W A N D E R I N G. And then the other one is wandering, W O N D E R I N G. So if you think about wandering, wandering is one word, is thinking, it's dealing with the thought life. And the other word, wandering, is a pathway that we choose to follow. So I'm wandering into the wilderness. I'm wandering into a place I shouldn't go. But in our thought life, it's wandering, W-A-N-D-E-R-N-G, because that type of wandering is dealing with the, the capacity of the mind. How are so many different thoughts that the enemy feeds us throughout the day, so our minds begin to wander. You're trying to figure out what to decipher, what to use, what to discard. And sometimes we hold on to every thought the enemy feeds us and our minds becomes entrapped in a place of wandering away from God. So in the previous chapter, actually 1 Peter chapter 1. Let me go there. 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter Chapter 1, in verse 13. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. It says, Wherefore, gird up your loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So, in the New Living Translation, it says it like this. So prepare your minds for action and exercise self-control. Put all your hope in the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. So we have to get to the place of a daily practice a habitual lifestyle of preparing our minds to receive the salvation of Jesus Christ when he is revealed to you and to the world. And one way to prepare your mind is to daily get into the word of God, find your favorite scripture, meditate on that scripture, ponder that scripture, devour that scripture until it becomes part of your life to your mind, rememorize that scripture. And when that scripture is in your mind, your body is going to follow suit because whatever the mind tells the body to do is what the body is going to do. Just like if my mind tells me I have a headache and I begin to ponder that thought, I have a headache, guess what's going to happen? My body is going to follow suit and I'm going to have a headache because I confessed it, I heard the thought, 
I accepted the thought. I received the thought. Therefore, my mind is now entrapped with the thought that I have a headache. In the previous chapter, we stated that the mind, a mind too busy is abnormal. So we talked about the normal and the abnormal mindset. Another condition of mind that is abnormal is for to be wandering all over the place. An inability to concentrate in, indicates mental attack from the devil. If you find yourself in, in a predicament where your mind is all over the place. What I mean by that, the Holy Spirit tells you it's time to consecrate, to get to the place of fasting and praying and seeking the face of God, which requires getting into the word of God. So you know what the Lord spoke to you to do, and your flesh begins to rise up and says, you know what? I know God wants me to consecrate and pray right now, but I need to feed my stomach. I'm hungry. So my mind begins to think when I should be praying, I'm hungry. So I'm not focused. Then it says, well, you know, I need to run these errands. I got things I need to do in the process of taking this time out of seeking God's face, of praying and, and fasting. So I get distracted. But all the stuff in my mind, because I let my mind wander into the pathway of all these thoughts until my body begins to wander away from the consecration and the fasting and seeking God's face. So now I got to a place where I wander, now I'm wandering. So I wander from the truth, now I'm wandering in the flesh away from God to do what I want to do to appease my flesh. So if you don't have a mind that's consecrated, in the case it's a mental attack from the enemy. Many people have spent years allowing their minds to wander because they never applied principles of discipline to their thought life. And that is a very true statement. Just like when you're growing up or raising your children in their learning education, they have to learn how to apply discipline to their minds to receive the information that they're being taught. And once they're receiving the information, then they have to learn how to apply the information for the things they have heard and the things they were taught about. That's how the enemy does to us because he knows when God is trying to convey a message to us, he'll bring everything in his power to cause you to lose your focus, which is distractions, which cause your mind to wander. So if you're wandering in your thought life, you'll never find yourself in a place where God can deliver you and strengthen you and empower you and cause you to have a balanced, focused mindset. Quite often, people who cannot seem to consecrate think they are mentally deficient. However, an inability to concentrate can be the result of years of letting the mind do whatever it wants to do whenever it wants to do it. A lack of consecration can also be a symptom of vitamin deficiency Certain B vitamins enhance consecration. Therefore, if you have an inability to consecrate, ask yourself if you're eating it right and, and are you nutritionally sound. So even food, certain foods you eat, you know, certain vitamins you take can enable you to have a productive mind, a consecrated mindset, but there are things we can eat and things that we, we take they can do harm to our mentality. It causes you to lose the nutrition to, to keep your mind from being balanced. And the enemy knows that if I can distract you and cause you to eat all the sugar and candy and cookies and cakes and all these different things, that's, that's sugars that's not productive to the mindset. So your mind becomes sluggish, so your body gets sluggish. And that's why so many people find themselves so tired and drain throughout the day because you haven't been feeding on the proper nutrition. I take vitamins every day. I'm always energized. And, and the reason why, because God told me a long time ago when I was sick with cancer that I needed to change my diet. Not only change my diet, but incorporate more vitamins and herbs into my diet. And as I've done that, I found myself be becoming more product productive and consecration in my mind became more clear. 
So now if I think about certain thoughts and it's not of God, I'm quick to recognize those thoughts and cast those thoughts down because it doesn't apply to the word of God to make it fruitful in my, bo in my body or my mind. So you have to be careful of the things you allow to enter into your mindset and the things you put into your body because it's not what goes to a man that defiles him. It's what, what comes out of you that causes you to be defiled or corrupt. Extreme fatigue can also affect consecration. I have found that when I am excessively tired, Satan will try to attack my mind because he knows it is more difficult to resist him during these times. You need to write that down. When you're extremely fatigued, the enemy knows that is the most vulnerable point he can attack you because he knows your mind is not, not at rest, but you're distorted and distracted so he, things become more difficult for you to resist him. And it's so important, and I found this out in my own personal life, that when I stay in the word of God, Apply the word of God to my heart, it gets into my mind. So whatever goes in my mind goes into my heart. So when it gets in my heart, then it, it becomes productive in my life. So when I am tired, even in the place of tiredness, I still minister. Someone can call me when I'm so tired, but yet the spirit inside of me is yet quick and alive and, and alert. I still can minister to somebody in my tired state. Because you have to apply discipline to your actions every day that your body will line it with the word of God by the mindset being changed by the word of God. Hear what I just said. Your body will line up with the word of God when your mindset is being changed by the word of God. Romans 12 and 2. Romans chapter 12 verse 2. <coughs> says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why? Because the only way to be productive in my mind, I have to allow the Holy Spirit to change my thought life. In the New Living Translation, Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, Don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Let God transform you into a new person by the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. All this I just read, it only will activate and become part of your life when you recognize that, hey, I need to get out of control to allow God to take control by disciplining my body to get into a place of consecration, I'm seeking God's face, have an intimacy with God through his word, and I guarantee your thought life will begin to change. You cannot change your mindset by your own ability. You cannot change your actions by your own, your own doing. Your own behavior must change by the spirit of the living God. It's very important to allow the Holy Spirit to be inside of you, to drive you to the point where you have no choice but to learn how to surrender, yield, and release yourself into his will that God's will be done in your life. One of my daughters had difficulty consecrating during her childhood years. Reading was difficult for her because consecration and comprehension go hand in hand. Consecration Concentration and comprehension goes hand in hand. So you got to have some understanding and you got to have some focus. That's what it's talking about. Concentration and comp comprehension goes hand in hand. Many children, even some adults, don't comprehend what they read. Their eyes scan the words on the page, but their minds do, do not really understand what is being read. I remember growing up in, in middle school, I had problems reading. And I would read to do my assignments that they would have you go home and do as the teacher would give you some homework. I would go home, read the lessons, and, and try to get understanding to answer the questions that was in the lessons. And I could never seem to understand what I read. Even when my parents tried to help me to understand what I was reading, it still didn't click. Because I, I guess because I wasn't focused and I really didn't want to learn it. And I found out as I got older, I had a problem with learning 
and reading because I didn't want to do it. You hear what I just said? Because I didn't want to do it. And these were the things that were very necessary for your educational growth in your life for the future. And a lot of people, a lot of adults even today still don't know how to read because they never took the time to learn and apply themselves to knowledge. You got to get to the place where allow the Holy Spirit to draw you to, to the wells of, of life in the Word of God to teach you and feed you, give you revelation, give you understanding, give you clarity of what you just read, that you would apply it to your life and that your heart would spout out life flowing out of you. Often a lack of comprehension is the result of a lack of concentration. I know that for myself, I can read a chapter in the Bible or a book and all of a sudden realize I don't know what I have just read at all. I can go back and read it again and it all seems new to me because even though my eyes were scanning the words on the page, my mind had wandered off somewhere else. Isn't that something? This is Joyce Meyer's book. And in her book, she's saying that she had an issue with reading the Bible, a chapter in the Bible, but yet didn't understand what she read because her mind had wandered off to something else in the process of reading. We do it all the time. We can sit, sit in our beds, and there's a, there's a dangerous place to be is in the bed at nighttime when you're ready to go to sleep and you try to read the Bible. I remember, this is going to sound funny. I remember when I was married, and I had problems sleeping. And my wife would tell me, she said, just read the Bible. You go to sleep. And I said, oh, that stuff don't work. And so she said, try it anyway. So I picked up the Bible, began to read one of my favorite chapters in the Bible in Psalms. And it was Psalms 91. And as I began to read that passage, I didn't get past the second verse until I fell asleep. And I said, I woke up the next morning like, I guess you were right. The word will put you to sleep. And, and the Lord said that was your flesh that didn't want, didn't want to give in to the word so until you fell asleep. You know, so I found out in the future, don't try to read the Bible when I'm sleepy because it ain't going to work. I won't get past the first or second verse without falling asleep. And we do it all the time. We try to force ourselves to do something our body don't want to do, and it just becomes a mess. And God wants you to know tonight that you got to get to the place in yourself when you focus, have focus, because without focus, you're going to always have a wandering mindset to go against what God wants you to do. Excuse me. Because I didn't stay focused on what I was doing, I failed to comprehend what I was reading. And that is so important. Stay focused on what you're reading. And the more you stay focused, the more the Holy Spirit can reveal to you what you need to understand in God's Word. Often the real problem behind a lack of comprehension is a lack of attention because a lack of attention caused by a wandering mind. Then she says, when Dave and I and a couple of our friends, uh, 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 our friends are with, with in Utah, were riding in the car together, Simultaneously, the other couple and I heard Dave say, I bless myself. We laughed when we all realized that even, even though Dave had sneezed loudly, one of us constantly heard him, heard him because we all had gone somewhere else in our minds. I spoke up and said, sorry, I didn't hear you. I was in, in the office in St. Louis. The man in the back seat laughed and said, I was in Florida taking care of some business. His wife laughed and said, Two said, I was in Dallas in my office handling a situation. In a few moments of time, there were three of us had all gone to another state mentally. Isn't that something? How in our minds, when it's something that we really don't want to pay attention to, we allow our minds to drift off to other places where we need to stay focused on what God is trying to speak to us. It showed us how quickly the mind can wander from what is really happening and where we are. We laughed because Dave had had to bless himself since none of us were mentally there. It was funny, but it was also eye-opening to realize how I can lose awareness of what is happening around us and by not focusing on the present. 
And that happens a lot. We can lose our focus by focusing on everything else but what the Holy Spirit is trying to convey to us. When the Holy Spirit is trying to teach us something or trying to warn us of an entrapment of the enemy, because our minds are wandering, we miss the mark. We miss the revelation. We miss the truth. What God has spoke to us because we got distorted in our minds and our minds didn't come back to the place to hear what God was trying to warn us of. Just like it might be a pothole in the road that's about to tear your car up. Holy Spirit says, you need to get over the next lane because there's something, some danger ahead of you. But if you're not paying attention, you listen to music and you, you're all focused on the music, you're not focused on the road, your mind on everything else, you hit that pothole, all of a sudden you blow your tire. All because you got distorted. I remember in Texas, when I was coming home early in the morning, I was so tired, I had this security third shift. And as I was driving home, I was not paying attention because I was tired. I wanted to get home right away so I can go to sleep. So I tried to outrun the traffic in the right lane and go around them. And because I, I was speeding ahead of them, I hit a curb of about two inches high, hit that curb and bust my tire. And the Holy Spirit said, I tried to warn you, but you weren't listening. And it hit me when I had to pull off into a vacant parking lot and call tow truck to go on. And the Holy Spirit said, if you had to slow it down when I told you and stop speeding, you wouldn't have ne never had this accident. So I had to put my car in the shop after that for two weeks just so it can be fixed. Because I had tore up not just the tire, but not knowingly, I tore up even underneath the right side of my car under the frame. And they had to fix all of that too. So it took them two weeks to fix my car for me to get it back. And that's how th quickly things can happen when your mind drifts from the Holy Spirit to follow after the dictates and leadership of your flesh. A wandering mind. Keep your foot, give your mind to what you are doing. And this is Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 1. Give your foot. Give your mind, it's a keep your foot, keep your, give your mind to what you are doing. So in other words, you got to stay, pay attention. I believe the expression, keep your foot means don't lose your balance and get off track. The amp amplification of the phrase indicates that one stays on track by keeping his mind on what he is doing. It's very important as a believer to keep our minds on what we are doing. Some people are multi-talented. They can do several things at one time. I'm a person, I have to do th one thing at a time. If I try to do many things at one time, I mess up everything. And one thing about this scripture, we got to stay firm-footed and rooted in Christ Jesus to where it doesn't matter what the enemy brings our way, I will not be distracted. I will not get off track. It's easy to get off track when you stop looking at the mark that's before you, which is Christ Jesus. I had a wandering mind and had to train it by, by discipline. It was not easy. Sometimes I still had a relapse. While trying to complete some projects, I would suddenly realize that my mind was just wandering off onto something else that has nothing to do with the issue at hand. Many people do that. They have an issue that's before them. Something that's very important they need to take care of. But you allow other things to come along to get you off track. And you never solve your issue. You never allow the Holy Spirit to give you revelation, give you understanding to solve the main thing you need to do that's before you. Because you allow everything else to take precedence in your priority list for that moment. It's very important that we get to the place where we say, okay, Lord, Today, I'm going to let you have the driver's seat. I'm going to sit back and let you drive me to the place I need to go in you so I can be more fruitful. I can be abundantly supplied with the wisdom and knowledge, the understanding, get a revelation from the heart of God to accomplish the things I need to do for the kingdom of God. Everything else takes secondary. And it's so important to put God first. Seek ye first. 
the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. You got to seek God's face first, and everything else will follow suit. The Webster Dictionary defines the word wander, W-A-N-D-E-R, as to move about aimlessly, don't have no focus, to roam. To go by an indirection route, to go by an indirect route, or at no set pace, amble. To proceed in an irregular course or action, meander. To think or express one's self unclearly or incoherently. Or, or incoherently. And that's what a lot of us do. We, we have aimless thoughts. We have no set focus. Our course of action is off track. And we are uncertain of what we need to do. Because I haven't did what the word says. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. So every time we get to the place in ourselves, we don't put God first. Who, who we put in first? The enemy. And the enemy loves it. He loves when a believer gets off track. He loves when a believer puts themselves first and put God secondary. Why? Because he knows that I can keep your eyes on everything else. You never follow after the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's very important that we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Because when you seek God first, God promises he will reveal his heart to you and he will begin to guide you in the way of truth and the path of righteousness that everything in your life will be fruitful. In the Amplifiers it says, seek the kingdom of God above all else. Seek the kingdom of God above all else. Then it says, and live righteously. You got to live righteously. Without righteousness and holiness, you can't even stand in God's presence. It says, seek ye first the kingdom, kingdom of God. Above all else, live righteously. And he will give you everything you need. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. That's what God's word says. So you recognize that, hey, I can't do anything without God. I got to follow his order. I got to obey his word. I got to surrender my life to his will. Everything you need, God says, I got you covered. I'm going to I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to guide I'm going to guide you in the in the plan and the will that I established for your life cuz I'm I'm the one in control of your life. I know the thoughts I think for you, not of evil, to give you a, a prosperous future. God knows everything that he has in store for you, but you would never know it with a wandering mind. So you got to get back to the word of God to calm your spirit, to calm your mind, to get your focus back. The enemy wants to keep you distorted in your mind where you don't have focus. And focus is, is clarity. It's getting understanding, getting a revelation, hearing the voice of God, consecrating, fasting, seeking his face, spending time in his presence, worshiping him, praising him. And when you do all these things that God loved the most, is giving him you. That's what he wants. He wants all of you and less of the world. If you are like me, you, you can be sitting in a church service, listening to a speaker, really enjoying and benefiting from what is being said, when suddenly your mind begins to wander. After, after a while, you wake up to find you don't remember a thing that has been going on. How many times you sat in church and you started out, when the preacher got up to speak the word of the Lord, you started paying attention but then somehow a thought entered into your mind. It might have been looking at another person's church, what they're wearing or what they look like and all this stuff. Or you might have been thinking about a thought came to your mind, well, I need to cook when I go home and, 
you know, I got to fix this Sunday meal for my family. And, or I can take my family to this restaurant. I can do this. I can do that. All it takes is one thought to distract you. Before you get, before you realize that one thought becomes bombarded with many thoughts. And all of a sudden, the preacher becomes irrelevant. I'm no longer hearing the word of God that he's talking about. Because my mind then left the building. But my body's still sitting there. I've done that before. When you start getting bored, because it seems like they're just rattling on and just talking and talking and talking, you get bored, also your mind starts wondering what you can do while after church and where you can go after church and all this stuff. And God had to teach me the same thing at an early age to learn how to pay attention and listen to the message that's being preached and allow the message to get into my mindset to change my attitude, to change my life. Even though your body stayed in church, your mind has been in the, at the shopping center, browsing through the stores, or home in the kitchen cooking dinner. Remember, in spiritual warfare, the mind is the battlefield. That is where the enemy makes his attack. He knows very well that even Though a person attends church, if he can't keep his mind of what is being taught, he will gain absolute, absolutely nothing by being there. That's why the enemy works so hard against us as believers to distract us because he knows if I can lose, cause you lose your focus, I can take control of your thought life and everything that you're trying to say, everything you're trying to do becomes irrelevant because now you done got distracted, you know, lost your focus. You don't know what to what to do, where to go. So now, what God's trying to draw you back to, you're not hearing, cause now your ears been stopped up with everything else of the world. The devil knows that a person cannot discipline himself to complete a project if he cannot discipline his mind and keep it on what he is doing. The devil knows more about you than you know about yourself. And it's, it's a shame because we give them the power to know more about us than we know about ourselves. And a lot of times, sicknesses enter into our bodies because we don't have the power in our minds to say no to his, to his influences or to his voice or to his words. So he'll speak sickness over you. He'll speak poverty over you. He'll speak lack over you. And you take it as if it's doctrine. And you apply it to your mindset. Your body's only going to respond. I said in the beginning, your mind is only going to respond and behave to whatever the thought life is. If your thought life is corrupt, just like a computer. When a computer has been infiltrated with a virus, that virus destroys the hard drive. And the only way to fix that thing is to wipe the hard drive clean and re re refactor it back to the factory setting. God did that with Jesus Christ in our lives. He refactored us back to the factory setting of his image and his likeness when sin dominated us before Christ came into our lives. And when Christ came into our lives, that's when God changed our thought life to begin to think that I am somebody important in the eyes of God. I'm a person of value. God loves me. God cares about me. I'm, a, I'm his prized possession. I'm a royal priesthood. I'm a holy nation. I'm a peculiar person in the eyes of God. Why? Because he paid the price for me to receive the new life by receiving his son as my Lord and Savior. This wandering mind phenomenon also occurred during conversation. There are times when my husband Dave is talking to me and I listen for a while. Then all of a sudden I realize that I have not heard a thing he has been saying. Why? Because I allowed my mind to wander off onto something else. My body was standing there apparently to, to listen, yet in my mind I heard nothing. I remember growing up as a teenager, even a young, younger than that, 
when I would be in trouble for something I did. I knew how to be in your face and hear you saying everything you're saying to me and tune it out. My, my mom and my dad would scold me. I would stand there, be looking in that face, hearing everything they're saying. And then they say, have you heard me? And I say, no. What did you say? Because I tuned them out in my mind. I went somewhere else outside playing with my friends instead of standing there listening to them discipline me or punish me. So in return, I got a whipping because I wasn't paying attention. So they told me again as they were whipping me, this is what I told you. And that's how the enemy does. He can cause you to be right in the presence of God. Hear what God's saying to you, but you're not listening because you done tuned his voice out. Everything else around you became important. What God was speaking to you became less important. So I tuned out his voice to hear what I want to hear so I can do what I want to do and be who I want to be. For many years, when this sort of thing happened, I, I would pretend that I knew exactly what Dave was saying. Now I, now I stop and say, can, can you back up and repeat that? And I let my mind wander off and I did not hear a thing you said. So, so what she's saying here, Sometimes when we don't hear what God is saying to us, we have to pause, put the brakes on, hold the press, and ask God, God, can you repeat that again to me? I didn't hear you, God, because my mind was distorted. I was focused on satisfying my flesh, doing what I want to do, so I didn't hear your voice. In this way, I feel that at least I am dealing with the problem. Confronting issues, confronting issues is the only way to get on to the victorious side of them. You got to confront your issues. When you confront your issues, then your mind has no choice to restructure, to refocus, to get rebalanced. So you can hear what an individual is speaking to you, even what God is speaking to you. I decided that the devil went to trouble to attack me with a wandering mind, then perhaps something was being said that I needed to hear. One way to combat the enemy in this era is by taking advantage of a recorded message provided by the most churches. If you haven't learned to discipline your mind to keep it on what is being said in church, then buy a recording of the sermon each week and listen to it as many times as you need in order to get the message. The devil will give up when he sees that you're not going to give in. The devil will give up when he sees that you're not going to give in. So even getting a recording of the message at church and all the different different recordings of sermons from other, other ministries that captivate your attention to feed your spirit, to feed your mind, get them. Because I guarantee the more you keep the word in your ears, it goes into your mindset. Your ear gate will be guarded by the word and it gets into your heart because it goes into your thought life. And when it gets into your thought life, it gets into your heart. Then you're going to remember certain phrases that's going to trigger when you hear them again. Hey, this is what God said to me the other day. I was listening to a message by Pastor Furtick or, or, or Joel Osteen or T.D. Jakes, and they said this, and they said that, and that stuck with me. So when you said this one phrase, it brought it back to my remembrance. That's how God does. Because he wants us to remind ourselves to meditate on that word, study that word day and night, in order to grow in grace and knowledge of who he is. Remember, Satan wants you to think that you are mentally deficient, that something is wrong with you. But the truth is, you just need to begin disciplining your mind. Don't let it run all over town, doing whatever it pleases. Begin today and to keep your, your foot to, and keep your mind on what you're doing. You will need to practice for a while. Breaking old habits and forming new ones always take time, but it's worth it in the end. The present moment is the greatest gift we have from God. The present moment is the greatest gift we have from God. But if we're not present, we miss it. If we're not present, we miss what God is trying to speak to us. 
So we got to get to the place where we practice daily. It takes 21 days to form a bad habit. God can break that habit. I see it all the time in one day. 21 days to perform a bad habit and keep that habit going in your life. But God can break it in one day. So what are you thinking about? Where is your mind at tonight? Are you listening to the voice of God? Are you feeding on the word of God? Or have, or have your mind wandered? And I guarantee tonight, after hearing this word, God is going to speak to you and remind you of something that's been said tonight that's going to trigger you to get in your Bible and begin to study the word of God and allow the word of God to bring you to a place of focus and discipline and well-balanced mindset. So, Lord God, we thank you tonight for this message. We thank you, Lord God, for the lesson, the information that we're learning from your word. Father, feed us continually like a shepherd feeds his flock. Father, cleanse our thought life tonight from wandering spirit, demonic forces, oh God, that infiltrate our thought life and cause us to wander into pathways we shouldn't go, Father God, doing things we shouldn't do because of a thought that we entertain. And Lord, we thank you that we have been cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. And that, Father God, that we're able to walk in a fruitful and abundant life that's found in knowing you. And I thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, tonight I encourage you to get to know him. Allow the Holy Spirit to feed your heart with the word of truth and, and to begin to filtrate your life with the abundance of the word of God that will help transform your thought life to become more and more like God. And so also I want to pray for those who are sick tonight. I have a friend I, I, I was telling me today that there's an illness that has come up on his body, some tumors. And I know God has the ability to heal tumors. And I want to lift up Eric tonight, my neighbor and my friend. Now I, I want to pray for him that God would touch his body and heal him. He, he's been listening to our lessons too sometimes throughout the week. And I thank God for that because some people in the building where I live at is spreading the word that I'm on live and they're and encouraging others to listen to it. And I thank God for that. And even if it's just one person on, I don't mind teaching anyway because it's not about the numbers. It's about getting the message out that to help change somebody's life. So, Father, tonight I thank you, Lord God, for your anointing, God, to heal and deliver those who are afflicted those, Father God, who are bound by sickness and diseases. I lift up Eric, oh God, and I speak to those tumors in his body, God. Father God, we know that you have the power to cause those things to shrink, to wither away and die. And Father, I plead the blood of Jesus right now, God, that those tumors would dry up in his body, oh God. When he goes back to the doctor, Father, they will be amazed of the doctor report that Father, of God's report, when he goes to get a report again, Father, that he will find a miracle taking place in it. But I believe you can do it, God. I come together in faith with other believers tonight, believing that your word shall prevail. Your word will not return to you void. You said, Father God, you sent your word to heal him and deliver him. I believe by faith, O oh God, that you're able to do it and that he shall be healed in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. And if you don't do it, God, we still know that you can. And we ask, Father, in any other illness that someone's suffering with tonight, God, that you touch their bodies, Father God, right now by the power of the living God. Allow the word of God to manifest in them, God, that their thought life will be, Father, in alignment with the word of God to receive the healing that will go down to their, their marrows and their joints, oh God. And every part of their body will begin to benefit from the word of God that healing would take place right now. And we thank you for it, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I want to thank you again for tuning in tonight. If you choose to sow a donation, I put the link on tonight where you can sow a donation to. And I pray that God continue to bless everyone who heard this word, share this word with somebody. I believe it's going to help change somebody's thought life, change their actions, change their belief system, and cause them to begin to redirect them into the pathway and the plan that God has for them. Because I know God can do it. He did it for me. He can do it for you. He can do it for somebody else. Stay encouraged. Stay excited about Jesus. And know that God loves you. And I love you too. Until next week. Lord said the same. Get, if you get don't have the book, get the book. Um, the book, uh, the Battle of the Mind. Even if you're getting the Kindle version, 
because I know that God God is able to uh, to give you understanding even more when you read it for yourself. Yes, I know about this, sis, about Tamika's brother. So, Father, we lift up, Father, the Wright family right now, God. We thank you, for Father, for comfort during that time of loss, oh God. As uh, Tamika's brother has passed away, Father, a couple of days ago, we just pray that you begin to be their strength, oh God, to endure this, this time of grief, to carry them through, Father God, and that you help build them up, oh God, where they seem to be torn down in their trust and belief in you, oh God, to know that all things still work together for the good, because you love them and you care for them in such a special divine way. And we thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, God bless. Stay excited, everybody. Love you all. Until next week, shalom, peace be unto you.